Police say two people are involved in the scheme, Maggie, while one suspect is in jail on a nearly $150 bond. Police are still looking for the other. According to police, two people behind a check cashing scheme in Hendersonville used a homeless individual that is suffering from the after effects of a traumatic brain injury to cash fraud checks at a shopping center. Homeless advocates call this disgusting. Some say they're not surprised. Executive Director of Shower Up, an organization geared to help those experiencing homelessness, Paul Schmidt says he's heard stories of people taking advantage of those experiencing homelessness. And unfortunately, it does seem to be a pretty common tale. Involved in something like like this, that's a whole next level kind of, for lack of a better word, evil. Police say Marquise LaShawn Watford and Chelsea Lynn Walker transported the homeless person to Hendersonville with the promise of work and payment. Walker and Watford both had previous warrants for human trafficking and kidnapping. Walker was taken into custody for outstanding warrants and is behind bars in Sumner County. And Watford is believed to be at large in North Carolina. For Schmitz, he says kindness doesn't cost a thing. And taking advantage of someone who's already having a hard enough time is disturbing. And to utilize that for harm, that's that's a pretty terrible thing to do. That's, um, that's kind of the worst of the worst. Uh, these folks need our, our friendship, our support. They need our care. We need to be our brother's keeper in this regard. Other groups in Nashville say they've seen this kind of exploitation before. Now, Metro's district attorney says about 200 people in Nashville are considered incompetent, meaning if they commit a crime, they'd be set free. Fox 17's Kylie Walker joining us live at the Metro Courthouse, where many of these cases end up getting dismissed. When there are concerns with someone's competency, it means that there's questions about their mental abilities and their ability to move forward in the legal process. A forensic evaluation team at Vanderbilt provides court-ordered evaluations. They not only look into the defendant's criminal case, but their past history. And we're also observing them. We're observing their behavior, we're observing their speech, we're noticing their thought process. And for those repeat offenders, we asked Dr. Kimberly Brown with Vanderbilt if there's a chance they could trick the system. And be able to trick them in any way uh, to be deemed incompetent so that their case is dismissed. Sure, that's something we're always vigilant for. We're, we, in this profession, forensic psychology, we're always looking for individuals who are attempting to exaggerate or feign their problems. Brown adds that oftentimes those deemed incompetent are so disorganized and detached from reality that they're not accurately tracking what's happening. If someone is competent enough to commit a burglary, how are they deemed incompetent later on uh, by medical health professionals? The ability to commit a crime is a really base level ability. So, you know, the ability to have an action and commit a crime is very different than the ability to understand what you're being charged with, what the consequences are, what the people in the courtroom do. Now, Brown tells me up to 70 percent of those committing misdemeanors are found incompetent at first. But there's still a chance for those offenders to become competent down the line through medication and proper training. Housing advocates tell me that senior community closing down displaced about two dozen senior citizens and gave them just 60 days to find something new to a new place to live. Now, once advocates helped started helping them find that new place to live, they realized that there was a three main issues at play here. Affordability, availability and accessibility. Cardboard boxes and stacks of furniture crowd the apartment of 71-year-old Frances Jones. It's the same price as her old apartment in the North Park Senior Citizen Community, but half the size and far less comfortable. It was convenient. It was neighborly. It was people cared about each other. She was forced to leave the community she called home for five years after the property sold to make way for new development. She and two dozen neighbors scrambled to find new homes within their modest budgets. Many senior citizens like Francis live on fixed incomes, which don't rise to meet demands of inflation and rent prices. You work 30 and 40 years out here for this little money, and then when you get up to get that little money, it ain't nothing. Finding affordable independent living options for senior citizens is a growing problem, says advocates with Awake Nashville. 
This mom and daughter duo realized the problem firsthand when their mom and grandmother was also displaced from the same community as Francis. We understand that development is going to happen. Development is a part of growth. But what we don't want is for the development to leave out the most important fabric of our community, the foundation of our community, our seniors. Awake is now partnering with a local real estate company to come up with new solutions for affordable, independent senior living. They're calling on local leaders to help them in their mission. We now want um, long-term commitment to trying to find solutions to a big problem. I reached out to Metro Planning asking what's being done to help with this issue. A spokesperson says they're requesting 8 million American Rescue Plan dollars to target housing needs for older adults. The ARP Funding Oversight Committee is still considering that proposal.